Turbine section of gas turbine engine. The turbine transforms a portion of the kinetic velocity energy of the exhaust gases into mechanical energy to drive the gas generator compressor and accessories. The sole purpose of the gas generator turbine is to absorb approximately 60 to 70 percent of the total pressure energy from the exhaust gases. The exact amount of energy absorption at the turbine is determined by the load the turbine is driving. That is, compressor size and type, number of accessories, and the load applied by the other turbine stages. These turbine stages can be used to drive a low-pressure compressor, fan, propeller, and shaft. The turbine section of a gas turbine engine is located aft or downstream of the combustion chamber. Specifically, it is directly behind the combustion chamber outlet. The turbine assembly consists of two basic elements, turbine inlet guide vanes and turbine blades. The stator element is known by a variety of names of which turbine inlet nozzle vanes, turbine inlet guide vanes, and nozzle diaphragm are three of the most commonly used. The turbine inlet nozzle vanes are located directly aft of the combustion chambers and immediately forward of the turbine wheel. This is the highest or hottest temperature that comes in contact with metal components in the engine. The turbine inlet temperature must be controlled or damage will occur to the turbine inlet vanes. After the combustion chamber has introduced the heat energy into the mass airflow and delivered it evenly to the turbine inlet nozzles, the nozzles must prepare the mass airflow to drive the turbine rotor. The stationary vanes of the turbine inlet nozzles are contoured and set at such an angle that they form a number of small nozzles discharging gas at extremely high speed. Thus, the nozzle converts a varying portion of the heat and pressure energy to velocity energy that can then be converted to mechanical energy through the turbine blades. The second purpose of the turbine inlet nozzle is to deflect the gases to a specific angle in the direction of turbine wheel rotation. Since the gas flow from the nozzle must enter the turbine blade passageway while it is still rotating, it is essential to aim the gas in the general direction of turbine rotation. The turbine inlet nozzle assembly consists of an inner shroud and an outer shroud between which the nozzle vanes are fixed. The number and size of inlet vanes employed vary with different types and sizes of engines. The vanes of the turbine inlet nozzle may be assembled between the outer and inner shrouds or rings in a variety of ways. Although the actual elements may vary slightly in configuration and construction features, there is one characteristic peculiar to all turbine inlet nozzles. The nozzle vanes must be constructed to allow thermal expansion. Otherwise, there would be severe distortion or warping of the metal components because of rapid temperature changes. The thermal expansion of turbine nozzles is accomplished by one of several methods. One method necessitates loose assembly of the supporting inner and outer vein shrouds. Each vein fits into a contoured slot in the shrouds, which conforms to the airfoil shape of the vein. These slots are slightly larger than the veins to give a loose fit. For further support, the inner and outer shrouds are encased by inner and outer support rings, which provide increased strength and rigidity. These support rings also facilitate removal of the nozzle vanes as a unit. Without the rings, the vanes could fall out as the shrouds were removed. Another method of thermal expansion construction is to fit the vanes into inner and outer shrouds. However, in this method the vanes are welded or riveted into position. Some means must be provided to allow thermal expansion. Therefore, either the inner or the outer shroud ring is cut into segments. The saw cut separating the segments allows sufficient expansion to prevent stress and warping of the vanes. The rotor element of the turbine section consists essentially of a shaft and a wheel. The turbine wheel is a dynamically balanced unit consisting of blades attached to a rotating disc. The disc, in turn, is attached to the main power transmitting shaft of the engine. The exhaust gases leaving the turbine inlet nozzle vanes act on the blades of the turbine wheel causing the assembly to rotate at a very high rate of speed. The high rotational speed imposes severe centrifugal loads on the turbine wheel, and at the same time, the elevated temperatures result in a lowering of the strength of the material. Consequently, the engine speed and temperature must be controlled to keep turbine operation within safe limits. The turbine disc is referred to as such without blades. When the turbine blades are installed, the disc then becomes the turbine wheel. The disc acts as an anchoring component for the turbine blades. Since the disc is bolted or welded to the shaft, the blades can transmit to the rotor shaft the energy they extract from the exhaust gases. The disc rim is exposed to the hot gases passing through the blades and absorbs considerable heat from these gases. In addition, the rim also absorbs heat from the turbine blades by conduction. Hence, 
Disc rim temperatures are normally high and well above the temperatures of the more remote inner portion of the disc. As a result of these temperature gradients, thermal stresses are added to the rotational stresses. There are various methods to relieve, at least partially, the aforementioned stresses. One such method is to bleed cooling air back onto the face of the disc. Another method of relieving the thermal stresses of the disc is incidental to blade installation. A series of grooves or notches, conforming to the blade root design, are broached in the rim of the disc. These grooves allow attachment of the turbine blades to the disc. At the same time, space is provided by the notches for thermal expansion of the disc. Sufficient clearance exists between the blade root and the notch to permit movement of the turbine blade when the disc is cold. During engine operation, expansion of the disc decreases the clearance. This causes the blade root to fit tightly in the disc rim.